Welcome to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In the previous uh, demonstration lecture of this week, uh, we talked about the sinusoidal model from a practical perspective. So we analyze uh, some sounds, some simple sounds, and we try to figure out what uh, parameters from the sinusoidal model would uh, give us a good visualization and uh, resynthesis of the sound. So I want to complicate it a little bit more by choosing uh, a little bit more complex sound. So we are going to analyze the madrangam. The madrangam is a, an instrument, a percussive instrument from the south of India uh, that is played as part of the Carnatic music tradition. And in uh, this picture, in fact, we sing uh, a J uh, on the madrangam, uh, and he's a TA of uh, this uh, course. And in the in, uh, in the voice singing is uh, Vignesh, which also is a collaborator in uh, in our group, and uh, we are also going to be analyzing some of his sounds. So let's uh, go find some uh, madranga sounds. And of course, uh, what uh, we would uh, do is go into free sound. So if we look for madrangam in a free sound, well, we're going to see, well, there's quite a few sounds. Uh, there is 7,000 sounds uh, of uh, the madrangam. That's pretty good. And the first one, let's maybe just open this uh, first one. And in fact, it's a sound uh, that was uploaded by a J. And uh, we can listen to it. Okay, that's uh, pretty nice. Uh, the madrangan is a very interesting instrument. Uh, it, uh, it produces quite a few different uh, qualities of sound, the way the, the, the instrument is, uh, is hit, and uh, there's different uh, balls that are called to, to produce different uh, sound qualities. And rhythmically, it's really complex. I mean, it's uh, the music uh, of uh, the Carnatic music tradition and uh, the way that the madranga is played. Uh, it explores uh, very sophisticated and complex uh, rhythmic uh, structures. Let's uh, just uh, use uh, one of the, these sounds. In fact, as part of the package, uh, the sound that we are using for this class, that is uh, a sound by a J, uh, and in fact it's this, uh, this fragment here. Um, and we can also listen for that one. Okay, so this is the, the sound and we can play it. Okay, so let's uh, analyze uh, this sound by a J. Uh, let's open the, the SMS tools uh, GUI. And let's start by looking at the short time Fourier transform. So we'll go and get uh, a mono version of this sound, the Madranga sound. Okay, and uh, we have to decide what parameters to use. So before we can uh, really make any decision, let's just take some default kind of parameters. For example, let's use a humming window, that's kind of a default window that uh, works quite well. In terms of the window size, okay, we don't know much, but okay, uh, let's uh, start with a thousand uh, samples of the window. The FFT size, when we don't know much about it, uh, the bigger the better, if it is not take too long. So, okay, so 4096 seems like a good enough number and the hop size well it should be it's good to, that is the smallest possible because a uh, uh, percussive instrument with these uh, sharp attacks it's good that we have a lot of frames and we can have uh, quite a decent uh, time resolution so let's uh, compute this okay so this is uh, the result the output should be the same because uh, we haven't done it's uh, the same, we haven't done much uh, to it, and the hop size is, is a good, uh, uh, it's in a good relation with the window size. Uh, and now what basically we'd like to is uh, understand a little bit the sound uh, so that we can better choose the parameters. So let's think about the window size that best fits this sound. So by doing, uh, for doing that, let's zoom into uh, one of these uh, sounds. For example, let's, this one looks good because it has a lot of uh, horizontal lines okay so these uh, are the partials of a sound no? it's a membrane that uh, creates some uh, some vibrations uh, they may not be completely harmonic but clearly there are 
some very stable uh, partials of a sound of the of the resonance of the instrument and we would like to see what is the the, the minimum distance between two partials so that we can uh, decide what is the, the the resolution that we need uh, the the best resolution that we need okay and by looking here on on the, where the cursor is we can see for example that this first uh, horizontal line is around uh, 200 hertz and the second one is around 400 hertz okay so that means that according to these at least the 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 minimum distance between two consecutive partials is around 200 hertz okay so from that we can try to compute uh, an appropriate window size um, so uh, as we we said in in uh, theory class uh, we have to start with the number of beams of a window so let's start with the, like this humming window so it's four beams and let's multiply by the sampling rate uh, for uh, 44,100 and divide it by the frequency resolution we want to have in this case we uh, make a guess of 200 hertz that we identified as a distance that was present in these sounds okay so this is 882 samples okay so we would need uh, this uh, 881 or let's say 83 samples so that we have a, a, a frequency that is an odd frequency size let's still keep the 50 size big so there's no harm on that and in terms of the hop size well it looks like we can uh, have a smaller one uh, so let's see 220 that would be one fourth of that Okay, and let's uh, compute it. That's not that different from what we started. So, in fact, what we started was pretty good. Okay, so this is uh, the kind of uh, an analysis that should be okay according to this measure. Now, let's uh, analyze the sound using the sinusoidal model. So, let's go to the interface and let's uh, open the sine model. So, let's go for uh, the Madranga sound. Okay, and uh, well, we have to choose the, the, the parameters for that, so let's uh, use uh, the same uh, ones. So we have uh, this uh, 800, around 883 um, samples. Let's use the same, the humming window. The FFT size, uh, let's leave it to this uh, 4096. Magnitude threshold, maybe we do not need uh, that much, let's say minus 60. Uh, duration, well, let's make sure that we have good enough uh, tracks, so let's maybe uh, 0 0.05. Number of sinusoids, 150, yeah, we need uh, quite a bit. Uh, deviation uh, doesn't deviate those that much, the sinusoids in this uh, type of sound, so this would be okay. Let's just first try this one, let's see what we get. Well, not that much, okay? So we have analyzed the sound and we obtained very few sinusoids. And if we listen to the result, well, not much there. It's, it has some sounds, but not much. So what can we improve from this? Well, the window size, I guess it was all right. Clearly, the magnitude threshold could be lower because clearly, uh, the, this sound was not recorded very loud and a lot of these things, especially during the decays, is, is quite soft. And clearly the sinusoidal tracks could be shorter because uh, this, uh, is, uh, the, the strokes are very short and some of these trajectories are going to be very short. So let's, uh, let's uh, have it at 0 0.01. Let's just have the rest as, as it is. Okay, that's better. That's better. Of course, from this picture, we might not get a good idea because we don't see the, the amplitude of, of each of these, but uh, that gives you something. And clearly on the waveform, it's uh, pretty good, much better. Let's listen to that. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, of course, one basic problem is the frequency resolution and the time resolution, this uh, time frequency compromise. So let's see if we can get 
better frequency of resolution. So these harmonics, I am sure there are some, as we can see here, that uh, are closer together. These are partials, are not harmonic in fact. So some are related harmonically because in the resonance of the instrument emphasizes certain harmonics, but some are not completely. So let's try to make it a uh, bigger window so that we can capture um, partials that might be closer together. So for example, let's go to 3001 samples, quite a bit more, see what happens. Okay, and let's just leave the rest uh, untouched and let's compute it. Okay, interesting. Uh, so we definitely got many more lines, uh, but uh, looking at the waveform, it doesn't look too good. Uh, let's listen to that. So in fact, if you pay attention, one of the biggest difference is that now the attacks are not crisp. They are uh, they're kind of smeared. We can of see also here in the waveform that the attacks are not so good. So, okay, so that was not a good idea. We might have gain on frequency resolution, but we definitely lost in uh, time resolution. So let's go back to a, a number that is uh, maybe, okay, let's have a thousand, which uh, was uh, uh, kind of a compromise. See what's happening now. And okay, that's uh, that's pretty good. That's uh, looking at the waveform, uh, it looks uh, quite decent. And if we listen to that, okay, it's pretty good. Even though if you listen carefully, we are still missing a little bit of the sound. The sound, especially during the attacks, there is a lot of energy. There is a lot of uh, noise into that that uh, maybe with these sinusoids are not well captured. But that's one of the things that uh, we'll talk about and we'll learn how to handle in the next few classes. This is all I wanted to say uh, in this uh, lecture. So let's go back to the slides. So we have um, done a little bit of more uh, analysis of a particular sound, in this case the madranga, using the sinusoidal model. And uh, of course we have used uh, the SMS tools and uh, sounds uh, from FreeSound. Hopefully this uh, has given you a better uh, understanding of the sinusoidal model and at the same time maybe you have uh, discovered this uh, new fascinating instrument which is the madrangam and which I encourage you to, to listen to it and especially in the context of Carnatic music. So uh, this is all and uh, um, I will see you next class. Thank you very much.